folks, my name is Sandy and this week we're taking a look at Steampunk Rally, a racing game in which you're trying to prove that you're the best scientist by building your own racing machine. Let's take a look at it so you can get an overall picture. Okay, so this is what Steampunk Rally looks like. In this game, you're trying to be the scientist who proves that he is the best one. How are you going to do that? Well, you have to be the, the, the scientist that finishes the farthest away from the finish line at the end of the game. How are you going to do that? Well, in each turn there's going to be four phases. The first phase is going to be the, the drafting phase, okay? So you're going to take one card from each deck here and you're going to be able to choose one and to use that card, okay? As you can see there's three different kind of uh, machine parts card and there's one instant action card in, this, in, e in, in the, the four decks, okay? So, uh, let's say I choose to play this one, what can I do with this card? Well, first, I can add it to my machine, okay, let's say I put it here, okay, the important thing when adding a uh, machine part to your machine is that it connects with a valve to the cockpit, okay, it doesn't have to necessarily connect with the, with the cockpit directly, okay, let's say it has this, but there has to be a, a way for that component or part of the machine to connect with the cockpit, you see, through these valves. Okay, so one thing I can do is connect it to my machine. Another thing I can do is I can sell this card for the amount of dice it says, okay, so in this case I would get two blue dice, or I can sell it for two cogs, okay, here we have it. Or, if it was an instant action, okay, so let's say I, instead of that one, I kept this one, I wanted to use this one, I can add this to my stash and keep it safe here, waiting for a perfect moment to use it and use its ability, okay? So, once I've chosen the card I want to use in this, in this part of the phase, let's say I'll add this one to my machine part, to my machine, okay, I will pass the, the remaining cards in this direction, okay? So I will give it to the player of my right and the player of my left will give me his three remaining cards and the process will repeat, okay? Like that, I will give two to the right uh, player, the left, until there's only one card remaining, okay? So I get this, let's say, and I can use it either to add it to my machine, in this case I couldn't add it, I, I wouldn't be able to add it because there's no valve connection for me to to do it. In any moment I want, I can uh, I can replace uh, some some machine parts. I can reorder them, okay? But it doesn't matter because I couldn't uh, I wouldn't be able to connect this one to my machine, okay? So I could sell it for two yellow dice or for two cogs, okay? So that's what I, I will I would probably do. Let's say I would sell it for two cogs, okay? Here, here we have them. And I would add it to the discard pile of its deck. Okay, so the next phase is the vent phase. What's that supposed to do? Okay, let's say I've used, whoops, some of these dice, okay? Let's say I've added this here and this here during my previous turn, okay? So, for each cog I spend, I'm going to be able to uh, take out two pips of the, of the dice I've used. So let's say I take two pips out of this, so this goes out, and I pay another one, so I take two pips out, this one becomes a zero, and this one becomes a four, okay? So now I'm going to be able, in the next phase, in the race phase, to use these slots again, okay, to, to activate that machine part. That's the, the next phase of the turn, the race phase. During the race phase, you're going to be able to activate your machine parts. How? Well, with all the dice you've gathered during the, during the, um, the drafting phase, you're going to be able to roll them, okay, and activate your machine parts, okay? So let's say I place this here, and I place this here, okay? They will give me some, uh, some abilities and some skills I'm going to be able to use during this turn in order to move or get some extra dice or whatever, okay? Another way to activate your machine parts is by using this light bulb token we have here, okay? I can turn it around and I will activate all the machine parts that have this light bulb token, you see? 
There's some in this deck that will have them, but all the cockpits uh, have this light bulb token. So uh, during the race phase, you're gonna be able to move around, okay? And to activate your machine parts, to get some dice, to move, to get some health, or to, or you will receive some damage as a consequence of using those, those machine parts. And the last phase is going to be the damage phase, okay? The damage phase, consists in looking at your damage wheel, okay? So let's say that I received two damage. Maybe some players will have cost damage with some instant action cards, but there's also some terrains here, as you can see, okay? This one would cost uh, three uh, damage to my character if I went through there, or this one would cost two, or this one cost one to me, and this one cost three, okay? So let's say at the end of this turn, I finished with two damages, okay? So I would have to discard uh, two, two parts of my machine, okay? So let's say this two. So the dice would go to the dice uh, thing pile, and this one go, would go to the discard piles, okay? So uh, I would be left with my cockpit. You can never discard your cockpit, okay? Let's say that your that you should have to, let's say in this turn I would have four, okay? four damages, I would have to discard four parts, but I only had three, so I would have to discard my cockpit. Then we consider that the machine explodes and that you're not and the, you're not able to go to go further. So let's say this is like this, okay? Once your machine explodes, your character will go behind the the last character and the board. So that's basically how it plays each turn. At the end of each turn, you're going to turn around this uh, the direction token. So now the cards from the drafting will go to the left instead of to the right. You will turn around your light bulb and you will discard all the dices that you haven't used, okay? So then a new turn will begin, we will we will draw one card from each deck, and that's basically how Steampunk Rally works. Once a character has crossed the, crossed the finish line, there will be an extra turn that will be the last turn, and the character who finishes at the farthest away at the end of the of this final turn is the winner. So let's go to my top three about Steampunk Rally. Okay, so the third thing I like the most about Steampunk Rally was the ridiculous amount of dice we have. We have 108 dice here in this game, and well, okay, I'm a component fan, and when a game has a lot of components, I usually like them. But I have to say that it doesn't feel like they just put them here to say, whoa, look, we have more than 100 dice in this game. No, it feels like you really need them, and it doesn't feel it. it really, you need them. Uh, because there's a lot of dice rolling going on and at the end of the game when you have this huge machines build up uh, You're gonna really need a lot of a lot of dice So uh, that's the thing I like a lot that there's a lot of dice and that they do make sense in the game the second thing I like the most about uh, About steampunk rally is the amount of, of characters that you have initial characters you see these are some of them Okay, but you have 16 uh, initial characters, scientists, that you can use. And I think that th that's really cool because that makes you, it's cool to have some characters that you have never played with when you're, one, you know, when you're gonna play this game. And there's 16 characters, so it might be difficult for you to, I mean, you have to play a lot to play each character at least once. And I also think that the powers of each character are really balanced. There's not a clear one that is better than, this one is better than the other. So I think that's a cool thing, and I think that it's, uh, it's well designed. So that's the thing I like a lot, that there's a lot of characters you can start with. That's a cool thing for me. But the thing I like the most about Steampunk Rally is the, the spatial aspect of the, the, the modular uh, building machine. Because I think it's, it's really cool. I, I tend to like when you have to organize your cards and your things 
and the space and a board game. I, I usually like them. And the connection between the vault when you're ba building your your machine, that's really cool for me. And it makes you feel uh, inside the game. Like you're building up this machine, you're designing it. You're, okay, this will go here and this will go there. And, and in the, if I put it like this, I will have more connections here. Or if I put it like this, I will get, that, get the machine completely closed. I think it's a it's a really neat aspect of the game and I personally personally enjoyed it a lot. So that's my favorite thing about Steampunk Rally. So let's go to my ratings. Okay, so for the theme I'm going to give Steampunk Rally a 9. I'm going to give Steampunk Rally a 9 because I think it's a really uh, unique uh, theme. I've never seen a game about proving that you're the best scientist and I like that it's in a racing way that you're building up your machine and I also think that the this uh, modular aspect of building your machine really really feels makes you feel inside the game so you're building this machine and you're trying to make it work and you're I don't know I think it's a theme that really doesn't feel that it's paced on the game I think that, that the mechanics and the theme make all sense and well I think this is a game in which the art really elevates the theme and makes you really feel inside of the game. And that's the reason I'm gonna give the theme a 9 for Steampunk Rally. For the mechanics, I'm gonna give Steampunk Rally an 8. I'm gonna give Steampunk Rally an 8 because it has drafting, it has dice rolling, it has a racing aspect, it has this a modular building or card placing mechanic. These are really simple mechanics, they're, they're not really new. But I like the way in which you fix those, those basic and classic mechanics and you get something really new. I mean, I, I haven't seen a game like Steampunk Rally uh, ever. So, okay, you have this drafting uh, mechanic that you might have seen in, in a lot of games. Dice rolling and also in a lot of games, card placing and a lot of games. Racing games, a lot of them, but when you fix them together, that's really cool. And I think that that's something the designers of Steampunk Rally have really achieved, and I like it a lot. I also like that it's up to eight players. Uh, that that's that gives you a lot of, of playability with with a lot of people. We somehow sometimes have a bit of a problem with my gaming group when we were like five or six. It's like, huh, the amount of games you can play, it's it's shortened, right? So this one being able to play from two to eight. That's a good thing for me. And I also think that this might be a, a kind of gateway, gateway game because I think that it's, it's not really simple. It's not really complex. I think it's really simple. And I think that if someone is willing to play a game uh, if they want to introduce in the, in the hobby, playing Steampunk Rally might teach them some really basic mechanics that they're going to find in a lot of games. And I think it's a really enjoyable game. So that's the reason I'm going to give the mechanics an 8. So let's go to the art and the components. Okay, so my rating for the art and the components of Steampunk Rally is going to be a 9.5. You have here the box, okay, it's really nice the cover, I think. It's good, a uh, thick box, okay. The rule book is square, which is something I don't usually like because it makes it a little bit hard to manage. and. I think it would be better if it was rectangular, but okay, that's a minor thing. The insert of the box, I think it's really nice also. Okay, we have a space for everything here. You, I store my dice here down below this. I think the box is okay, it's good. Then we have this ridiculous amount of dice, which are really good. They're small dice. They're some a little bit chunky, which is good. They're plastic dice, normal plastic dice. Three colors. I think they're good and well, you know, I like components <laughs> in the game. Then we have this token here, which is good. Thick cardboard. The cardboard components are really good. They're, they're thick, as you can see. Okay, they're not extremely thick, but okay. Useful, you, you, you know they won't have a lot of damage and they won't break and bend. So that's good. The light bulbs here, it's okay. Then we have the, the damage wheel, which I think it's, it's crazy good. You see, it's it's really nice and it's really useful. And you have this. I think they could have done an, an easier thing, but I'm not gonna complain. <laughs> then we have the character, uh, the character tokens. Okay, the scientist tokens. We have 16 of this, which I find really nice. 
and I enjoy a lot that they're like a uh, real scientist. Okay, we have Santos Dumont. We have a lot of them. We have, well, a lot of them. And they're good. And I uh, think I like a lot about about the about this game is the um, the stands for the characters. As you can see, this stands here uh, don't cause a lot of. You can put the um, the characters here, and it won't damage the. It won't damage the, the cardboard from the character. And I, that's something I appreciate a lot because that's something that drives me nuts when you when you put them inside in the in the stands here and, and they get like um they get like damaged. I don't like that. And this ones are really good and neat for that. They they feel they like, that you haven't put the characters in a stand ever. So that's a really good thing. The the board, the the racing track, I like a lot that it has two different scenarios we have here the Alps mountains and here we have like a Paris uh, or is it the Eiffel Tower like Paris a uh, racetrack I don't know why but it's kind of cool they're thick they're good they're rigid they're they're good component quality my major problem with this game is with the cards As you can see the cards I have them sleeved that is something I usually don't do but uh, the component of the quality of this component of the cards they're really smooth they're really like I don't know they they feel like a little bit too fragile like they will bend or they will uh, they will be I don't know they will have some damage when you use them so that's my major problem with the components of this game but the rest of it is just amazing incredible the art is, I think, is the best art there could be for a for a steampunk themed game. So this is this is the reason I'm giving a 9.5 for the art and the components of the steampunk rally. So let's go to my final rating. Okay, so my final rating for steampunk rally is going to be an 8.5. It's going to be an 8.5 because when I saw it uh, two years ago in at SM. I fell in love with this game and this year I finally could uh, get a copy of it and it's a just really really fun game uh, with with really cool options each time you you draw cards and the drafting phase are like whoo cool option whoo better option and it's like wow I love that kind of game because it's like wow but the other players are also getting good options so so that's a, a thing I like uh, about this game. I think it's a fun game, a competitive game, and it's really simple to teach. There's not much complexity, although it's really uh, it has a lot of things. It's not a, a simple, boring game. It's simple but fun, and that's a great combination for board games. So that's the reason I'm gonna give Steampunk Rally an eight point five. So I'm gonna give Steampunk Rally a seal of excellence. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.